Hey YouTubers, my name is Andro and this is a match I played with um, one of Yuzes, um, uh, a person by the nickname of IP Man. Um, he's one of the subscribers and as you can tell the match is, um, I played it and now I'm commenting it, um, so it wasn't, it's not a live comment. Um, anyway, so um, he saw one of the, or some videos that I made um, that maybe you have seen as well and um, he wanted to play against me. Um, and obviously I was cool with that um, and apparently uh, Mr. IP Man uh, is an um, experienced turn-based um, game player uh, he lives in England but I think hails from some eastern parts of Europe full of snow and oil anyway uh, it was a very interesting match what am I writing here uh, ah, it's just because uh, it's just kind of jump cut um, that I hear a lot of units. Um, yeah, sorry about the map. I, I, I think this is like a fourth video in a row where I'm playing on train yard. Um, there's not much I can do about it. It's, um, I think I think IP man chose the map. I was like, yeah, just just go with whatever. Um, not really thinking that my previous three videos are on this map, unfortunately. But there are only five maps in the game, so. Anyway, so, so far you saw me um, do my usual opening move on this map, they probably are seeing this for the fourth time. Um, uh, we're smoking here a bit and uh, Mohammed is in his usual place and <laughs> uh, it's a bit of a sloppy o um, o opening I feel now and uh, probably next time I play this map on this side I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it up. But it's, I, it, it's even getting a bit boring for me, but um, anyway, so on on, uh, on the first turn of, of IP Man, I heard a lot of units, like I said, uh, move around, and I'm also writing something here. I can't really tell what I'm writing because I'm doing this preview window, I think. Uh, I'm writing, I hear drums, something about a sniper, but I, then I delete that and I write, uh, trouble is here, I think. Anyway, I'm, I'm sure you can see that much better than I can. I saw in the preview window of the video editor, it's a bit, it's a bit fuzzy. Anyhow, so nothing, no one comes out, it just, you know, the music appears, uh, and so far nothing, and then I decide to move one of the smoke jumpers kind of to the back side, um, and there we go, we have one unit there, and the smoke jumper, she gets uh, a, a full of, uh, a portion, a portion, a ratio, a ration, no, wait, how shall I say this, a donation of laser to the face, I think that's, that would be correct, and <laughs> that's Chuck Norris over there, um, um, so yeah, the the match in general turned out to be quite interesting, uh, even though IP Man doesn't really have um, much experience in XCOM. Um, I, I don't remember if I just already mentioned it right now or not, but um, um, he has apparently competed in some tor tournaments in, uh, and it was I think it was Heroes of Might and Magic. Is that the name? Where the turn-based game, fantasy. I I, I used to play it um, in high school. I'm not sure what the full name is. I think it's like Heroes Three, Heroes of Might, Might and Magic Three. I think there's also Four, um, which wasn't that well received as far as I can remember. But anyway, um, so yeah, so not experienced, not very experienced XCOM player, but a very experienced um, um, turn-based game player, and that made for a very interesting match. Um, well, at least in my opinion, and um, he seems to agree with me. So that's that's two people. I think you should believe us. Okay, so in the game here we have uh, IP Man's turn, um, and oh yes, the sniper shows up. That's why I was writing about the sniper because when I heard the drums, I was like thinking like it's probably a sniper because they usually have a bigger um, what's this? What's it called? Field of view, I guess. Um, that extends a lot further than uh, let's say assault field of view. Um, okay, so something must happen since I cut it like this. I pre-cut the audio. Oh, there we go. There's a grenade. At this point, I was like, oh, it missed me. It missed me. Great. And then it turns out it was just a bit of a lag. Um, it was a very uh, good use of grenade, to be honest, because uh, it was followed up by a um, sniper shot to the face. And that's my doctor dad. Um, and it's not my most expensive unit, but it's like a mid-range. And then we have immediate follow-up. Um, by an assault trooper. Um, obviously, my assaults miss because at that distance, I think the percentage is like one percent. And um, she immediately takes out uh, Muhammad. So one turn, two people dead, and I'm only left with three. 
And as far as I could tell at that point, what am I writing here? Not bad, yeah, it's not bad, that was pretty good. Um, so I have the wounded um, uh, smoke jumper girl over there, who is still trying to take out um, this person, who is, I think, a smoke jumper as well, maybe. Um, and I have two, um, two assaults uh, who are supposed to be my kind of shock troopers, uh, but, but they're now like almost the only troopers. Uh, and since I saw the grenade come in, as I was, so I was, I'm thinking it's either a muton of some kind uh, or a big old floater, uh, the, you know, the heavy floater, um, or the sector commander. And since I didn't really hear uh, the muton steps, um, so it's either a floater or, or a sector commander, but I was, I was kind of leaning towards uh, a sector commander at that point, which means mind control, obviously. So there's no point shooting from there, and what I do is I kind of move them slightly away from that assault and um, into a bit of cover and uh, steam up. Because if we don't deliver some damage to the enemy at, at right now, then you know, obviously the game is lost, and it's at this point it's going quite badly for me. Um, because they have lost no one, and I've lost two, uh, two soldiers. So what the IP man does here is probably what I would have done. I'm not sure if the if the sniper was a hunter because I would have somehow tried to maybe move ahead, uh, move up and try to sh shoot again and not waste a turn for the sniper but maybe it was not... No, it wasn't. It was a hunter because... Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, I want to quickly comment here that... Um, so the assault retreats back and, and takes a shot at the wounded smoke jumper and that fails. Um, thank Jeebus. And then so it's my turn here. But what was I saying about the sniper? That, that I think yes, sniper was a hunter. Um, otherwise, he wouldn't be able to. Um, he wouldn't be able to kill the uh, the medic is that is that is lying dead over there. So anyhow, um, so sniper was on Overwatch and it was a successful Overwatch shot. Uh, but my unit is, is is drugged up. I moved over there because I was thinking he was on the other side of of that um, uh, whatever that car type of car is called the fuel thing uh but you were still close enough to go into um um into running gun and take that sniper down um i was i guess a bit slightly lucky here but it's 70 percent critical because i need the critical otherwise it's nine damage but it was 15 it's more than enough uh so the sniper goes down um but that's hardly enough to change uh what's happening in the game so i use the second um assault uh, to try and take down their assault um, who is hiding behind another dual carrying type of train car I don't know what it's called just write in the comments <laughs> I'm sorry I've, if I knew the name I forgot um, so yeah so it's 100% and we need a critical and we get a critical and that's two um, high like medium to high value um, troopers of IP men dead, and then I get even more lucky, and uh, well, those are not really lucky, but this was kind of lucky, and I finally um, take down the smoke jumper. This is uh, three units dead, and the situation is kind of um, evened out a bit um, at this point because I have three units left, and from what I know, I haven't seen any other units. I think at this point, I can't really tell what it, it says. Something there more fun this way or something like that anyway um so this is when we see the sectoid for the first time and there's a sectoid commander um so my my hunch was more or less correct and obviously he sees my assault trooper and goes for uh its mind its mind his mind um and that that mind capture is um is a success so I'm left uh, effectively with two troopers, and one of them is suppressed now, and the other one is too far away to do any real damage to anyone. So situation is a bit pants. Um, so I guess I do what you know every law-abiding citizen would have done in my case, which is run. Obviously, I first check on um, the percentages, but you know, there again, they're quite pants, so um, I have to have to use my legs rather than my guns. Um, the idea here was that if I run away far enough, um, 
and for enough turns I stay hidden, then I, you know, obviously get the control back over my assault soldier and it's going to be a bit easier to, um, to try and take down, uh, take down the, um, sector commander over there in the, in the train, in the car. Um, and if at this, if until this point, my my playing was a bit sloppy. I um, after this, I think um, I did quite okay uh, under the circumstances. And as you're gonna see, I think that's gonna be a mess. Yeah, and that poor wounded soldier is gonna be instrumental um, in in this game. Uh, it's funny that like the ones that you expect, uh, sometimes the ones that you least expect to survive are the ones that really help you. Um, help you out in the end in a big way anyway um for some reason i still see oh i speed up here okay so because this is the this is the period in the game where i'm just running and ip man is trying to catch up with me but mostly using uh my mind control unit um and i don't know what happened there. i think someone died someone one of my soldiers died but i didn't have a med kit anyway so um i'm trying to go as far away as i can at the same time to stay in, um, in high cover, just in case I am found, um, and um, especially it's, it's going to help, I think, if, if um, uh, my mind control assault were to take shots at my other assault, for example, or my other unit, uh, my uh, my smoke jumper, because um, their aim is, is shit anyhow, and but if you're kind of kind of far away and behind solid cover, then you should be more or less safe. Anyway, so we keep hiding, and I not seeing them at the same time i'm kind of trying to with the assault i'm trying to come over the other side because i know that the control to 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 um to the assault for the assault the control of the assault is going to return to me quite soon but you know that's not my only objective obviously i'm trying to win the game so i'm trying to kind of oh he also also he takes a shot at he sees the smoke jumper takes a shot and misses um i'm guessing the um the success whatever percentage there was probably like 40 or 35 um, so yeah, as I was saying, uh, my main goal here was to win the game, not just to uh, get the get the, the soldier back. So I'm trying to kind of come from the other side, kind of uh, flank um, the potential position of the um, of the sectoid commander, um, and I decided to use the smoke jumper as sort of my uh, my recon unit, as my eyes on the field, and I discovered the. Um, um, the sector commander take a desperate shot it's a miss but it destroys some cover and I can see that the sector is right next to him so um, and by now I know that those are the two units he has the control is um, uh, is is returned um, uh, on the assault uh, soldier um, and what I'm trying to do now is is to uh, surround um, the sector commander or at least to get close enough um, to um, to, to to run and gun him. This guy, by the way, has only one shot left in his uh, uh, in his uh, assault. What is called alloy, alloy cannon. There's an uh, Overwatch shot, but that misses. And uh, also, I'm trying to keep him in the complete whatever shadow in the fog of war, uh, as to not get any more psychological problems f from the mind controlling unit. And oh, also, I, what I experienced here was that I lost that you know that this kind of grid that it gives you, where it's like your blue line and your yellow line, it just dis disappeared. So I had to kind of orientate, or or orientate, orientate, orient. Uh, uh, I uh, sorry, I just lost the command of English language. Um, I had to find my way around uh, without that grid, and it was a bit of a pain, but only a slight. Um, nuisance really so on ip man's turn he's trying to get closer i think to the only unit he sees at this point which is the smoke jumper and he keeps his um his uh his two remaining units together and i'm still trying to find a position where i won't be necessarily seen but it will grant me a closer look at at the situation um and I make it. If am I gonna move this guy first? I don't remember which, what I'm gonna do first. I think uh, yeah, I start with the smoke jumper, because there's a bit of a mistake that I make in there, and it's gonna come up um, shortly, and I'll comment on that. I don't remember what I do here, to be honest. I think 
Did I do that move? No, I don't... Yeah, that was a smart move, probably. Oh, well done, Andre, well done. And... Uh, is this the one that moves now? Come on, I need to... I need to talk about the mistake. Make the mistake. There's only 30 seconds left to make the mistake, come on. Alright, so I move him over here. And then the other one is makes an almost fatal mistake of going over there. And the reason is that um, I'm I become suddenly visible to the uh, sector commander and I go, ah, shit. Um, I didn't really count that well if uh, he had um, mind control, um, as if his mind control has recharged, but it hadn't, thankfully. And um, he only frays, uh, does the mind fray, which is still quite bad because it can't really do much. Yeah, you're alive, um, but that's pretty much it. Pretty, pretty, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Um, so yeah, and that, that kind of decreases my chances of success, but I, you know, I, I'm still kind of doing okay here, and I have the mobility, I, I think, or as I perceive it, perceive this myself, um, I have two wounded, and all of my soldiers are wounded at this point, and this guy becomes, like, basically useless, um, and to be honest, I, again, I don't remember what I do with him, must, must do something, I think, do I hide him? Oh, because I'm thinking that he's going to get back his um, his mind control uh, next next turn. And if I stay there, then even, even yeah, I'm afraid, like mind afraid, but um, he's still going to mind control me. So I, I in, instead of uh, continuing my approach um, within the run and gunning distance, um, I, I, re, uh, I withdraw my unit kind of um, retreat slightly and hopefully tactically. And what happens here is that um, the sectoid for some reason tries to go back towards the commander. Um, I don't really know because if I were if I were him I would just move the sectoid to the left knowing that that's where my smoke jumper most likely is. At the same time you, you saw and I saw at the time um, that the sectoid command commander uh, moved in uh, closer, and I guess that was a sort of a, I don't know, was it a really a mistake or not, but didn't really end that well for IP man, that move anyway. So I move in my smoke jumper and again take another desperate shot. I understand that, that he probably is not going to kill um, the commander because the, I think the critical chance at that point is what, like 30 maybe? And it doesn't really happen that often, just, you know according to my anecdotic, anecdotal um, evidence. Um, so here I'm checking if, uh, if the mind fray uh, still applies, and it does. So I know that he is busy now with my smoke jumper, uh, because if he doesn't kill the smoke jumper, then smoke jumper kills the sectoid commander. Um, so I am kind of, I feel, I feel that I can just put him out in the open um, in an attempt to move him closer to the other cover over there, uh, to the other car. Uh, because no one's really gonna bother with him. There's a there's a bigger danger for IP man's commander over there, uh, right next to him. Uh, and it's funny, quite it's quite funny that I mean he was a bit lucky there. I mean he probably had a big percentage anyway, but he didn't flank my soldier. Um, he just went behind her, but I think she was the cover still applied. But um, um, luckily for him, he managed to kill her. And this guy's. I think his mind fray is gone, but his movement is kind of still limited, is it? Or is he, is he okay now? No, I think he's okay now. So I'm trying to figure out what would be the best way to approach the sector commander. And I decide, if I'm not mistaken, to go over there where it's pointing now and go into Overwatch. I don't know why I'm thinking for so long. It's quite obvious. There you go. Thank you, Andrew, of the past. You have the gratitude of Andrew from the future. And then uh, I choose the middle point there because you can, you can be on either edge and probably be able to see the commander, but the shooting um, percent should be quite low. And I prefer not to be visible because if he mind controls one, then 
the other one at least has a chance to run and gun him. And at this point, the sectoid commander has only four health, which means all he needs is a, even a non-critical shot that just lands will do it. And um, the turn which I cut out um, because nothing happened was about 60 seconds long. And I, at this point, I have no idea where he went. And you can see me kind of um, contemplating which way to go, this way or the other, thinking of which, which way is more likely that the sectoid commander went. Um, because, as I said, I heard him move, uh, but I have no clue whatsoever where he is because I hid my, my um, assaults quite well so that he wouldn't be able to mind control them. And so I decided to go on to, um, to the, like, whatever, left, I guess, at this point. And I see him. And he's not, I cannot exactly come up right next to him, but um, still quite okay. And IP man writes, good game. And I think I'm also replying something here. Should be. That's how I remember it. Yeah. Very intense. Very tense. That's what I usually write. <laughs> and that's game over. And I think it's the actual game. I cut it, I think, to 20, 20 um, seconds. 20, sorry, 20 minutes. Oh, and there's a nice glitch in the end over there. Uh, but I think the game went on for about... I don't know, for like 32, 33, um, uh, 33 minutes, something like that. It's quite long and quite tense and uh, like all the way till the last second, I wasn't sure that I could pull it off. Um, and again, that's another thing I like about XCOM that uh, and XCOM multiplayer in, in particular, um, that you, you can still come out of very difficult situations. It's, it's very rarely um, I encounter something like, oh, this is definitely it like there's no way I can come out of it um, so yeah that was the game with um, IP men uh, one of my subscribers and it was a very rewarding game and I'm not saying this not because I won but I think because it was pretty cool and um, I thank you for watching and I have to leave you at that because I'm going to this um, drinking thing with uh, with the people from RPS and uh, I'll see you next time I guess Thank you.